The funny cars can race the quarter mile in less than seven and a half seconds. Top speed, 190 miles an hour. This much power can be lethal when out of control. So you knew it was dangerous, and I always knew it was dangerous. I made no bones about it, and, and I accepted that, um, that I could get killed in a, in, a, in, a, in a race car, especially after the accidents I had. of his life. You look at it from the standpoint, um, like if you take Scott Coletta's crash, uh, where we lost him at, at Englishtown, and you look at my crash from 83 at Columbus, there's a lot of similarities there, but yet I walk away and we lose, and we lose Scott. Uh, but there was a couple key differences. Um, like when I, when I had the fire in Columbus, it was the shortest track. Um, it was even shorter than, than English Town. And <clears throat> there was a few things that happened that basically allowed me to walk away. And a lot of this is luck. It's just the way it all played out. And I'll give you an example. When the, the throttle stuck, I'd already pulled the parachute because I always drove in the parachutes. And I tried, and I made the mistake being a rookie, I tried to pull the throttle back with my foot. And, I could, and it wouldn't work. And I should have just went for the fuel shut-off. I mean, when the throttle sticks, boom, slap the fuel shut-off. Because if you slap the fuel shut-off fast enough, what happens is it just immediately shuts the fuel off. So when you take the fuel away instantly, it's going to backfire. The supercharger, you're going to have a flash fire, but there's not enough fuel in there. Fuel's what makes the bomb. It's what makes it explode. Well, I waited too long. By the time I went over to reach for the fuel, uh, shut the fuel off, the engine blew up. It blew the right valve cover out and the, and then the fire went onto the right tire and it blew the right tire out shortly after it crossed the finish line at the time there was no guardrails past the finish line at in columbus luckily and it would have been totally different if this hadn't happened the fire was down i could see the fire but i could see through the windshield so i could see where i was going so i would grab the brake and because the right tire was was uh, blown out it would pull the car to the left and the fact that I could see, I saw the net, and I thought, okay, there's trees over here, there's a net here, I'm probably, my, my best chance is to hit the net. So I'm actually letting off the brake, trying to steer it and just trying to feed the brake <clears throat> to get it to slow down, and so I, because of that, it had a lot of speed, went off the end of the racetrack. Ron Colson, who drove for Roland when I first started crewing, when I, the first race I went to work for Roland, Ron had crashed off the end of the track at Columbus. The chutes failed, and they didn't have a net, and he went, in, he went off the end of the track. He wasn't going near as fast as I was, and what he did is he spun the car out, and they backed it into that guardrail because there was no road across the, that back road. You just ran into a guardrail. And he backed it in, and it did some damage, but it was, it was repairable. So I remember that. So as I'm going down there, I'm thinking, okay, th this is not going to be good. i got to hit that net, and when I hit the net, I gotta just whip the wheel and try to spin it, roll it to scrub off speed before it's gonna hit before it hits whatever it's gonna hit. And I thought that's my only chance. Well, unbeknownst to me, Steve Gibbs, I owe my life for this. He had decided that morning, this was Saturday, they didn't have this on Friday. Saturday morning he decided to put a second net up. I'm down here at the very far end of National Trail Raceway. When this track was built back in the early 60s, the shutdown area was more than adequate for the cars of the period. But now, with the top classes going almost 100 miles an hour faster than they used to, you'll find a unique piece of safety equipment down here. It's called the net. In fact, in this case, it is a double net. The idea is to catch a dragster, a funny car, whatever, if the parachute and the brake should fail. How well does the net work? Well, we all found out yesterday when California funny car driver Mike Dunn gave it the supreme test. If you look at the video, when it goes into that net, the car goes sideways because I whipped the wheel. And, and it cuts right through the first net and it hits the second net sideways. And the second net stops it. And 
you know, I get out of, you know, I get my belts off and I jump out of this thing because I don't know if it's on fire. I mean, it's dirty, can't see nothing. And I get out there and there's Steve Evans and it's my first interview. And the safety safari goes over there and they're looking. They thought, they're looking down the road. They, they thought I got thrown out of the, out of the car because I got out of it so fast. And they look over and I'm getting interviewed by, by Steve Evans. You know, and, and the point is that just because of those series of events allowed that to happen. Scott's accident... He had the fire, but the fire was intense. He couldn't see where he was going. It burned everything off. He carried the speed off of, off of the end of the racetrack, and it climbed the wall, and, you know, unfortunately, we lost him. But, I mean, that could have easily have been me. So Scott and Connie, for sure, understand the dangers of our sport. Do we like seeing people get hurt or killed? Absolutely not. But if we understand if you don't want to get killed, don't get in a race car that runs over 300 miles per hour in less than four seconds, you know? Because bad things can happen. Mike Dunn, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. One of the worst accidents I've ever seen at this end of the history. Uh, wasn't that bad. <laughs> it looked it from here. I think when you see the tape, you'll believe me. The net definitely prevented what could have been an awful bad situation yeah, for you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Throttle hung wide open and uh, you know, reached for the fuel shot and then blew up and backfired and everything else. So. Everything went wrong that could go wrong, really. Yeah. I was pulling as hard as I could to get that throttle back, and uh, something got hung up somewhere. I'll let you get up to your crew. They're concerned as we are. Mike Dunn, one cool driver under intense pressure.